Hey YouTube, I'm Jeff. And I'm Dana. And this is another episode of Dark Moon Metals. Now, we're about to get started in our introduction to MIG welding series. Now, a lot of these videos that are on the web already have somebody behind the torch who's relatively experienced and has a basic idea of what they're doing. I've done MIG welding since I was 14 years old. Dana hasn't even touched the torch yet. Now, she's been playing around with a plasma cutter and she's even done some work with the oxygen and acetylene setup. But this is going to be the first time ever that she's done any type of electric arc welding. And as many people will tell you, is that uh, if you're going to get started in that, MIG is generally the most forgiving. It doesn't need as much finesse as TIG, and it doesn't need as much experience or uh, time to get used to as stick. So we're going to jump right in, but first thing we need to do... Clean the metal. Clean the metal. Yep. Alright guys, you may have noticed that when I was grinding on this plate, it was starting to move a little bit on the table. Um, it's not very uncommon. If you have a metal table and a piece of metal you're working on, metal and metal slides. Uh, this right here is um, basically a placemat that I picked up at Walmart. It's made of that rubberized material. It's very similar to what they line toolbox drawers with. It's not as heavy duty, but it's kind of a sacrificial type of thing for the shop. If you put this down, and then put your metal on top of it, you're going to find that you can press down as hard as you want and you're not going to move this piece of metal too much. Okay YouTube, I know I covered safety a bit in another video. But I want to kind of recap just for this series. Now for MIG welding, you want to have a long sleeve dark colored shirt. You don't need welding leathers. Uh, the shirt I had from school was basically a button down, uh, navy blue shirt, collar, button all the way up to the top, long sleeves, and make sure that the sleeves fit inside your welding gauntlets. Um, I was wearing a short sleeve shirt all day today. Uh, Dana had a shirt that's not really a natural fiber, so we're just throwing the leathers on to be safe. But this is really overkill for beginning MIG welding. Um, the gloves, however, remain the same. Whether you're wearing uh, a work shirt or a leather jacket, you want good, heavy leather gauntlets for your hands. And you want to make sure that when you put the glove on, your sleeve goes into the glove and it covers all your skin. You don't want any exposed skin whatsoever. Now. The biggest protection that you need to think about is your eyes. And you need to have something a little bit better than just regular safety glasses. Now both Dana and I are going to be using auto darkening welding helmets. Now they're two different brands but they pretty much function the same way. As soon as you strike an arc, this glass darkens in the blink of an eye and it offers you the protection you need. Uh, regular welding helmets that don't have the auto darkening feature are dark all the time. and you to typically see people raising and lowering their helmet to see where they are, where the torch is in relation to the piece they're about to weld. Uh, with these helmets, you don't need to do that. Now, the one downside, um, this particular welding helmet I picked up at Lowe's, and it's made by Cobalt. And I learned the hard way that this particular welding helmet is not meant for overhead welding. Uh, the sparks can get down behind this protective shield and actually destroy the auto darkening filter. So you do really want to do some research on your welding helmets before you uh, go out and buy one. You want to make sure that it'll do everything you want it to do. Now, you can go out and get one of the old school welding helmets. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these things. They are tried and true. They've been tested through the years. And there are a lot of people who still prefer to use these. Um, you can pick these up at any welding supply store. And some of the big box stores that are now carrying welding equipment, you'll see this style of helmet or you'll see the auto darkening. Now, one thing I want to touch base on with the helmets. Some of these helmets require batteries, some of them don't. Some of them are strictly solar. As soon as that solar cell picks up a flash, it darkens, and it uses the solar cell to power itself. Uh, usually it has a battery backup. But this particular welding helmet, uh, this was my dad's, this is a Miller, and it has an on-off switch inside. I've made the mistake of putting it down 
putting it back on, striking an arc, and forgetting to make sure that the helmet hadn't automatically shut itself off, because it does have a power saving feature. So you want to make sure that your helmet's on and ready before you strike an arc. Other than that, you want to wear a denim or a natural fiber pants, and you want to wear a good quality pair of work boots. But uh, as far as personal gear, that's really all you need. Um, Dan is wearing a bandana, I've got my welding hat on. I'm not anticipating a lot of sparks flying, but uh, again, it's just safety gear that we can have, and uh, you know, better safe than sorry. Safety glasses. There are some people who will tell you to put safety glasses on under your welding helmet. Uh, you can, it's completely up to you. But every welding helmet that's currently manufactured in the United States meets all of the OSHA safety requirements that safety glasses do. If you're doing stick welding or you're doing flux core uh, MIG welding, you get that little deposit on top that protects your weld. And you usually chip that off with some type of a hammer. Now, 90% of the time, you will be lifting your welding helmet to do that chipping operation, and that's where the safety glasses come into play. If you're doing stick welding, it is a good idea to have these on underneath, just so you don't have to keep taking them on and off. So you ready to get started? I think so. All right. Okay, YouTube, today we're going to be using a Millermatic 251. Now, this is set up with shielding gas. It's got an argon CO2 mixture. For those of you who aren't familiar with welding, welds typically require some type of a shielding gas to protect it from the atmosphere surrounding the weld. The shielding gas ensures that there are no impurities in the weld puddle and helps keep out porosity. Now, the argon CO2 mix simply means that we're not going to be running what's known as a flux core wire. A lot of the welders that you see in the big box stores uh, are typically what they call flux core machine. Now a flux core wire machine has a special coating on the wire itself and as it burns it creates the shielding gas cloud. Now there are a lot of people who have been able to do a lot of great welding with this stuff but for me I'm just not a big fan of it and I find that a system set up with shielding gas is a little bit more forgiving and a little bit easier to get used to. Now the old Hobart MIG down there on the end that is set up with flux core but we're not going to be getting into that today that'll be for another time. So let's get the machine fired up and get ready to weld. guys, here's a close-up look at Dana's first two welds. Uh, my weld is up at the top. The middle one is Dana's first weld ever. And the next one is her second pass. Now, I'm, I'm experimenting a little bit myself, uh, shooting through an auto-darkening helmet, which is uh, kind of interesting. I haven't had the perspective before, because uh, I've only been the one welding in here. So, uh, Dana was noticing the wire hanging off the edge. Now, what a lot of people don't know, and they will discover quickly, is they need to keep the wire trimmed. Now, you see the wire hanging out of the torch? Yeah. Okay. Basically, you want about, you know, you want about that much. So whenever you start your pass, that's what you want hanging out of your torch. And you want to start, if you're welding, this is called bead on plate. You want to start about a quarter of an inch in from the end, and if you can help it, you want to end a quarter of an inch before you go off the plate. Now, because you're doing a drag technique, you might not see that until the very end, but um, if you happen to go over, don't worry about it. We can always grind that off. So, you up to trying another pass? I think so. school. All right, let's take a look. Not too bad. 
But now I'm going to show you a little bit of a technique. All right, so basically you can watch too. What Dane has been doing so far is taking the torch and basically dragging it along going in a straight line. What I'm going to do is show her a pattern. Some people call it the crescent patterns. Now there's a lot of different ways you can make weld beads. Some people do crescent moons. Some people do a series of script E's. Some people do C's. There's a lot of different ways you can form a bead. Now, my bead on this plate, it is thicker than Dana's uh, on both passes, but I was going very slow. And right now I've got the machine set at uh, 20 volts and I've got the uh, wire feed at about 300 inches a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to lay down one of those C or crescent moon shaped weld beads. And I'm going to have Dana watch me uh, through her helmet. So we'll be right back. Okay, there's my crescent shaped motion on the plate and that gives me about about a quarter of an inch wide bead so you got a good look at what I was doing you want to try to replicate it right. well, see. but this time let me put my welding helmet on before you start welding thank you Dana Okay guys, now th this is actually kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Now this is Dana's first bead, the middle one right there, the, the second one in. And you can see where you got a little bit of skips, um, very very fast travel speed. And she just did this. Um, that is something that I didn't see in school until uh, my second day for a lot of beginners. Now, when I had gone to school, I had done MIG welding before, so it was pretty easy for me. Um, you know, there's a little thing where we need to tie in the toes, but we'll get to that later. But that is a very impressive bead for uh, for your first, what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of really welding? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so you got a chance to see Dana's first impressions and first couple of passes behind the MIG torch. So what did you think in the end? I liked it. I, I really, really liked it. Um, and it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, the next video we're going to be doing more bead on plate. And I'm going to be showing Dana how to put two beads together, rolling one crown into the other. And I'll be talking about the weld bead more itself. Uh, now for the next video, I'm going to have Dana setting up the machine and getting her used to what it feels like when it's running too cold, when your wire speed isn't fast enough, uh, maybe you have too much wire speed, not enough heat, and really it's going to be the troubleshooting phase. Um, a lot of people will not do this after five passes. Dana has four, four passes, excuse me. Dana has experience. Um, with the plasma torch, so she has handled, you know, high voltage equipment before and knows about flying sparks and things like that. But um, she also has a lot of hand-eye coordination from playing violin and piano for years upon years. So maybe she has some secret advantages we don't know about, but it is still kind of fun to watch her reaction uh, putting down weld beads. Um, that being said, we're going to end the video here. 
Uh, the next video we're going to be talking, um, like I said before, about the weld bead profile itself, what you're going to be looking for for a good weld bead. And um, we're going to get a little bit more in depth with that. I'm going to run a few beads, Dana's going to run a few, and I'm going to see if she can match what I do just by showing her the basic weld patterns and using the same settings. Because I want to prove that somebody who has never done this before can really start MIG welding. It's not as complicated as it seems. Um, read the instruction manuals, follow all the safety guidelines, and you can be doing really cool stuff. You can be doing your own projects, your own little repair work, and it's an awesome, awesome skill to have. But we're going to end the video here, but not before we wish everybody out there a very happy holiday season. Uh, we should be starting to shoot again probably after the first of the year, and uh, we can't wait to get more of these videos up on YouTube. Uh, we love sharing them with you, we love your comments, and um, we look forward to doing this again in the future. It's just something that we love to do. Got anything else you want to say? I'm good. See, she knows she's good. See what I have to deal with? <laughs> anyway, YouTube, it's been fun. We'll see you again after the new year. Hope you guys have an amazing holiday season. I'm Jeff. And I'm Dana. This is Darkwood Metals. We'll see you again soon.